Hey folks, welcome to uh, episode four of Remnants of the Precursors. I'm playing as the humans in their attempt to overtake a 70 star galaxy. Now, uh, in the last episode, we just got a few new planets. We would just taken Skalas and Nigala, which has opened up some interesting options, right? So we've got, we are now in range of this planet here. This is uh, Vadris. It's an ocean planet and it's a size 70. It's got poor minerals, so it's not gonna be the best planet, but we wanna get it. It will also put us into range of this one here. Now, we could take Akmar. The problem is that we've got currently, uh, there's Alkari and there are a Mekloth. There's a Mekloth ship there too. So I'm just gonna have a quick look just to see what this Mekloth, oops, what this Mekloth ship is, if we've got any intelligence on them. It's this one here, Bite. Yeah, we, we, we haven't scanned it. Um, I think it might be a scout, in which case we can just chase it off. And if, if that is the case, let's just, well, I mean, we should be able just to move a few fighters over. These fighters are currently in transit to Minos, where we decided to colonize this planet quickly. Um, there's a colony ship on the way already there. I think I might move some of these destroyers up to Nigala. Oops, that's the wrong button. So here we go. Let's just move those up to Nigala. I think the Alkari are going to be relatively friendly with us now. So um, Ray very kindly pointed out in the comments that the uh, when I was musing as to whether pacifistic race, uh, pacifistic leaders, whether they would de declare war on you because of because your fleet is significantly smaller than theirs, the answer is no. Um, we went and had a look in the code, and yeah, basically, providing that the if it's a pacifistic AI, then it won't declare war on you just because it's bigger than you, basically. So um, the, we're actually relatively f uh, safe with the Alkari. Now, I was originally thinking of just invading them as an early war, but the whole reason why I was playing was that I was going to play as the humans so that I could play a little bit more diplomatically and it'd probably end the game a little bit quicker, right? So I might just I might just see if I can play them play the diplomatic game with them. And let's expand outwards to the you know to the north. We'll go through Akamav, we'll try and take Vadris and Minos, and then see who we bump up bump up against uh, you know in this direction, and then just see what our chances are. Now if the AI has developed a lot quickly more quickly than i i have and i don't look like i can take them in a war then perhaps i can just sort of betray the alkari here and just take all their planets and by that point i'll have some really really nice planets to be able to to base my industrial efforts from but um let's for the time being i'm going to try and play it play it friendly which is really against what i usually do in forex games i don't usually i don't really like having allies in forex games i've i think it was from playing stars in shadow and like you'd you'd get a non aggression pact with someone in Stars in Shadow, and then just as you were about to as about about to colonize a really tasty planet, your ally would come in and go, "No, that's mine," <laughs> and I'd be like, "Oh, oh, give me that back, spin it, spin it up, man, spin it up." So yeah, I, I've kind of I don't like playing diplomatically generally in these games anymore, <laughs> not unless I have to, but um, yeah, it's kind of the human speciality. So okay, so we need to get some fighters up here. So let's let's chase. Let's chase those guys off Akamar. We probably, if it, providing it is a scout, we won't even need all those ships. I'm just going to leave. I'll leave one fighter on Vadrius just to discourage anybody from from sneaking it out from under me. Yeah, this this rich planet. This is a size forty rich planet. Um, it's a toxic planet, but that will be a really nice planet for us eventually. We just don't have the technology for it yet. Um, okay. The reason, by the way, that I, I got concerned because the Alkari had a lot of ships. And the reason why they've got a lot of ships, if we just have a look. They've got a lot of medium ships, look, compared to us. I mean, they're, they're, their fleet dwarfs ours. This is, I think, because they are mili they're a militant-based mili militant AI. Um, see, they're pacifistic militarists, which somebody in the comments made a, made a good point that that just seems really counterintuitive and a, a bit paradoxical, but... The pacifistic side just means that they're less likely to dec declare war, whereas militarist means that they they really heavily value war. Uh, they they value fleet size, I think. So they will they'll put a lot of spending into into holding large fleets, which makes sense if you're a pacifist, right? You know, you need to carry the stick with you if you're 
when you're walking softly to quote that old proverb okay so let's let's start moving these turns on i'm just gonna have a little quick look at my planets probably should go to the colony screen for that it's probably a better way of doing it uh factories yeah Also, um, I'm not going to go too. I, don't, I know I have a habit of doing this now because I've got kind of got into the because I did that tutorial series first. But I don't want to just turn this into a long, sort of long-winded tutorial series when I've already done one. But uh, there are a few things that are worth re, re going over again, and one of them is the fleet screen. And one of the chaps on the Reddit forum, one of the modders, very kindly reminded me that there's some really useful things in the fleet screen that I I I don't always pay attention to because I'm used to playing Master of Orion, so I kind of forget about it. But Let's say that we, we want to change. Um, I, I've just noticed, for example, that all my planets are currently building, they're queued up to build bombers. They're not set to build any because they've not got any allocation, any spending allocated to it. But let's say that um, I want to change all of these planets now so that they would be they would be building fleets instead, uh, scouts instead. What we would do is we select all the systems that are building uh, bombers. So we click that and you'll see that that will now filter all of my planets that are actually building bombers. And then we just we just change it to scout. And now if you just click on exit, you'll see every time you mouse over one of these planets, they're all now building scouts. This is really really useful. Um, I don't want to be doing this by the way because this this planet this one particularly wants to be building a colony ship, I think, um, so that we can start taking some of these. But yeah, th that's one that's one use for the for the fleet screen. Another thing that you can do, let's say we want Skalos to be to be quickly populated, we can click on send transports and look. If we highlight over all of our planets, it will set so that um, all the planets that are currently selected will start sending transports. Obviously, we wouldn't want all of those planets to do that. So let's say we, we could select that one. We just wanted Norpin, which was the one that was building the colony ship. We just select that one there, and that should just select Norpin now. Oh, no, it was Gagarin. There we go, look. And then you click on Send Transports, and that will send transports to Skalos now, or wherever it is that you want them to do. If we wanted all those um, planets that were set, that were building scouts to do the same, we just click on this look, and you'll notice that all of them except Gagarin are now, are now selected. And then you can click on Send Transports, and you'll, you'll notice... Oh, hold on. That wasn't right. There we go. Now all of them except Gagarin, you'll see, are actually sending... As fleets. This is just a when you've got a large galaxy. This is a really, really useful tool for being able to uh, to manage manage some of that stuff that you might be microing a little bit too heavily. So, yeah, the fleet screen is just really, really useful. It's got other uses as well. You can you can quickly select, say, all of your sky, um, all of one kind of ship, and quickly send them to another planet. Um, so, yeah, okay, let's get on. Ah, and predictably, I just built a ton, a shit ton of scouts. That's no problem. Let's just go back to the. That's the one problem with playing with settings. Sometimes you forget what you're doing. <laughs> so let's just change that Gagarin back to uh, back to the colony ship we were supposed to be building. There we go. We're just building it in two years. It's not going to take too long. Um, right, we have got a colony ship on the way to Minos, so the next one wants to be going to Vadris or Akamar. Now, Akamar's a much better planet. Um, Vadris might be useful because it might put us in range of some of these up here. So, I think I'm going to go for Akmar because it will then put us in the range of this uh, Juraya planet. Okay. Just going to qu quickly look at my uh, my uh, other systems. Orknet needs some more population, so I'm going to send a few transports just from Earth. Earth's got five missile bases now. I don't really need too many more than that, so I'll just leave it at five. I'll let that max out. Uh, another piece of advice that was given to me on the Reddit was that uh, the reason why I, my, my planets were defaulting to put d um, spending into, into defensive bases, missile bases, was because this setting here, look. So you can change the maximum amount of bases for each planet. And if you if you take that down, then it won't automatically assign this to, to defensive spending, to, to defensive bases. So just worth bearing in mind. 
so just another little quality of life saving tool right we've got a load of scouts we don't need all these scouts now so um at the same time they're not really doing much harm let's just send them out to some of these planets just ready okay there we go and that will do for that turn oh we built more scouts where have they been built okay i was obviously building something else too what i might do is i'm gonna i, I might I, I don't need all these scouts once they've once i've finished all my current scouting missions i'll probably just get rid of the design scrap them all <laughs> there we go it's no pin look i'm just building loads of scouts let's just make sure that we've got I'm just going to go back to the fleet screen and just select everyone that's... Yeah, it's just Norpin, so let's just change that back to something more useful. Okay. It was Norpin was actually built. I remember now, we were building um, we were building these destroyers with it. I'm not actually going to bother for the, uh, with shipbuilding at the moment. Let's going to put everything into... We'll put into missile bases and into technology, apart from this these colony ships that we're building. Let's just kind of... Start putting more back into back into tech. There we go. Scarlas, uh, Scarlas also needs some population. So does Nagala. Yeah, Scala. I mean, uh, what I was doing, I think, if I remember right, I was sending, I was populating Nagala using Scala, so I'll just use, I was just using that as a, a growth planet. Okay, we just cancel that. There we go. This is a colony ship from Gagarin. So ah, we've 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 just chased off that Mechla fleet, I think, um, which means that we can go and take that particular that planet there. So I'm going to move it up to Nagala first. And then from Nagala up to Akamar, just in case the um, the Mechla do decide to send more ships our way to clear to to retake the to retake that planet or that system at least. Okay. Okay, so we've got five missile bases now at Earth. Let's just carry on uh, with tech spending. One more colony ship at Gagarin. Actually, I think I'm just gonna put some spending into. Yeah, into tech on Gagarin, because that's our research world. Uh, we've maxed out the factories here. Let's start building some missile bases here too. Um, okay, so those transports are starting to arrive at uh, Scala, so I'm going to send some more over to Nigala. Oops, 7 million. Let's just send 5. That'll do us. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I'm, I th I think I am going to get rid of those scouts soon. They don't they don't want to be sitting there. They are they are costing money. They're not they don't cost a lot, but they are they are actually costing money. So let's send these ships in up here that way up to Inverna. Who's this? This is the Silicoids. Now, it might be worth sending some ships just to sit on um, this planet here because the silicoids will be able to co uh, colonize that easily, whereas we can't, and I don't want them to take that, actually. So let's, at Earth, let's build us... I wonder if it's how close we are to being able to to get some decent combat ships. We're not far off from Fusion Bomb. Once we've got Fusion Bomb... And I've got a missile of some kind. I forget which weapons I've got now, actually, but... Uh, we've got Hyper-V. So Hyper-V rockets and fusion bombs, we could make a decent uh, decent planet-conquering ship. Um, a half-decent planet-conquering ship. And I will use that to uh, as a defensive thing, basically, for the time being. They do take a little while to build the large ships, but it might be worth it. So um, I'm just wondering whether it's worth building it now or whether we should wait. Fusion bomb... It's actually quite close. Now I was rushing for robotic controls by the looks of it and improved industrial tech eight. So we'll put a little bit more into a bit of spending into into weapons too. There we go. 
Okay, there's like the last colony ship. Uh, we've got a hostile Mechlo fleet. Let's just. I'm just going to see what they've got. No, it doesn't look like they've got any missiles, so I'm just going to. I'm just going to retreat. And we've completed uh, terraforming at Skalos. Right. Let's just bang out some population here. Uh, yep. Let's mix it up. Um, Nagala. Same job. Yeah, we've got five transports on the way to Nagala. Um, yeah. This Okay, this colony ship now. Firstly, let's just stop building colony ships here. We'll just put it on fighters or something. And um, we're just going to max out the technology spending here. Yep, that's good. Yeah, 779 till fusion bombs. We're just about to break in improved industrial tech 8 and improved robotics controls, which is great because we'll that will imp increase the amount of the amount of factories that we can control. Okay. This colony ship is going to go up to I'll again move up to Nagala first. And um, we're about to Oh no. Is that right? Yeah, it is Nagala. There's another one on its way somewhere too. There we go, there's another colony ship. Oh wow, it's, it's still got a little way to go. I think we can actually redesign these uh, some of these colony ships now so that they move quicker. That would probably would be smart. Um, Orc Debt still needs a few more, so let's just send a couple more transports. There we go. That's not the scout. Okay, so we're uh, colonists are orbiting Minos. So this is the fertile planet, um, but it's resource poor, so it'll take a while to build factories, but it will grow population quicker. There we go. And Minos sounds like a good name to me. Okay, back into tech spending on Earth. And we've colonized miners, so we want to start sending some transport. So let's get to the fleet screen and let's just select. Hold on. Deselect all. You can slift, shift click to uh, send transports now. So, oh, sorry, to select, um, to select systems as well. So click on there and then we want to send, send 10, 10 from the gala, 15 from Scarlas. Yeah, that's 25. Um, we want probably a few more than that, actually. Let's just individually change this this one. Um, let's send 25, and then we'll send a few from Norpin up to Skalos, just to take up the slack there. Okay. Okay. Uh, just make sure we're not building any colony ships we don't need. Yeah, Nagala's still building a colony ship. Um, do we need that? We've got one uh, set to go to Akmar, and one is going to Vadris. Now we can actually check out some of these other planets too, although the Mechlar have got ships over them. So let's start moving some of these myriad scouts that I have out now. Um, let's check that one there. But let's go for this furthest one, and then when these arrive, we can take some of these closer ones, I think. Uh, this planet is an arid size 70. We'll be able to get that once we've taken one of these, I think. So. Um, let's send. Let's send some fighters. In fact, let's just get. I'll, I'll first send this scout out, I think. So let's just send this scout out to uh, check out one of these planets. Then we'll send some fighters just to go and sit on this planet here. I might pop a couple on here too. Just to dissuade any, uh, any sort of unarmed colony ships or scouts from, from sitting on these planets and, and claiming them. 
Okay. We started to take a fair portion of the galaxy now. We've got access to to a lot of the galaxy. So uh, I mean, we're getting into that sort of mid-game portion now, where we've kind of you know we've met mo most of the AI. Um, we haven't got eyes on where on any of the well, we're not within range at least of any of the other races yet. Ah, the Mechlar we can see now, and the Silicoids. Okay, that's good news. Let's uh, first of all let's put some. We'll send some spies their way. We don't want too much spending on this. And let's just talk to them and see what they're saying. So we've got an honourable industrialist. And a xenophobic militarist. Okay, so the silicoids are going to be problematic to deal with. Uh, let's have a look, what, see what we can get from them. Let's propose a big trade treaty. Okay, there we go. I don't actually remember them ever saying no to a, a larger one, in in preference to a smaller smaller trade treaty. I, I'm not sure if that's the, if that does happen or not, and. Now, a non-aggression pact we don't want with the Mechlar. The reason being is because if they are in our way, we will want to attack them. And being honourable, they won't take being they won't take the breaking of an NAP very lightly. So, you need to be a bit more careful about entering into agreements with honourable races. Okay, there's a lot going on now. So I apologise if the turn times are taking a little bit slower. Garin, ah, okay. Let's make sure our waste spending is okay. Uh, let's do this in the colony screen, can't we? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I'm going to increase the missile base size on this planet here, and uh, once we've once we've maxed out our factories, or my my factories, then I shall I'll, I'll start building some. Defensive bases. Probably want some more. Probably some more of these transports coming out to mine us. I might just send a few more. Let's just change that for a minute. Yeah, just a few more. There we go. Okay, there's improved industrial tech eight. And let me see. Duraloy armor is useful. Battle suits are very useful. Uh, automated repair systems super useful. Um, Duraloy armor is probably probably slightly preferable to battle suits just because it also gives you a bonus to ground attacks too. Um, automated repair systems is super useful. I, I mean, once you've got that, you can start creating some decent ships that will repair themselves. Now very hard to kill, which is what you want. Um, I think I'm going to go for Duraloy armor, actually. Okay, so they want a non-aggression pact. No, I don't want a non-aggression pact with you. Not yet. Oh no, the scout's not close enough. Ah, here, a colony ship has arrived now at Nagala, so let's send that out to Akmar. The next one that arrives we'll send to uh, Sivadris. One thing I'd like to see for the AI in this, I think, is if they're in range, I'd like to see them guard planets that they've earmarked for colonisation. I don't know if... I don't really know how the AI works in this, actually, but um, th that's kind of what a player would do. And I forget now actually whether they do that or not. Excuse me. So um, if they don't, that would be that would be something I think that I'd like to see the AI do, or certain types of AI do. Okay. Silicoids want a trade agreement. No. No, I'm not going to have a trade agreement with the silicoids. I don't want to be friends with everybody, and I don't actually don't want to make them any stronger. So, 
me just check check what we know about them. We don't know very much. Yeah, they're xenophobic anyway. Um, they're gonna they're gonna invade us at some point. So there's no, I don't want a trade agreement with them. Let's get these scouts checking out some of these close planets. That's a nice planet there, of Sandy. Yeah, I think that, that I mean, I don't think yet that we can create, I don't know if I, I've got enough construction tech yet to be able to create a, let's just get rid of this bomber a second, to be able to create a large colony ship with reserve fuel tanks. No, I can't do it. Oh, I might be able to if I get rid of, ah, I can. Okay. Interesting. There we go. Oh, there's plenty of space. Um, it might even be worth just arming it. I might, oh, I can't put a Gatling laser on. Okay, forget it. Um, I mean, I know it seems a bit silly. It might seem a bit silly, but arming your arming your ship just means that you can drive off anything else that's there. You see, so um, don't really need the maneuvering speed. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, that's probably not worth it. And that's just like making it unnecessarily expensive. But the warp, the warp two is worth it. So let's make this um, long range colony ship. So LR colony two. There we go. So actually, we can take we can we can take Hufandi here, which is a nice planet, um, and we probably want to build it from Scarlos. I'll build it next turn. Um, yeah, I'll build it next turn. Okay, so that's a barren planet. Uh, Nagalo has reached an industry maximum of 170 factories. Okay. So, Skalos now, we're almost at max population. That's great. So let's just drop that down and we're gonna put the, put the extra, oops, the excess into into this uh, into this long range colony ship, so we can take a fundy. There might well be some other nice planets around here too that we can take with these with these sneakily sneakily ranged colony colonists. Okay. Now that colony ship has now arrived. I don't want to have too many colony ships going on at once. Actually, um, they are expensive. They are expensive to maintain, so they really you take a hit to your industry. Uh, that being said, it is also I don't know. I quite like to try and get spread out as fast as I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight planets so far. We're just about to take another two. One, two. We can take this barren planet too. Oh wait. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not gonna. Uh, that's been guarded, so it'll be okay for the now. I don't want to have too many colony black because you you have to you have to also then send transports out from your planets and if you've got colonists or in space they're not working and making money so you want to minimize that as much as possible okay so we've uh, we just need to start building more whoops there we go ah oh, hang on something like that there we go okay Nigala yeah that sounds good we'll just leave that okay now these fighters are sitting over Hotar ah here's a Mechlar world so the Mechlar around here somewhere somewhere around there 
look at this 400 factories this is the thing with the mechlar they they can control more factories per population so um yeah, i presume that they've already got improved industrial tech three or factory control sorry improved robotics control three and they'll that's their natural bonus so for 100 pop they got 400 factories it's impressive the amount of industrial output that the mechlar can can produce Yeah, I've built up enough treasury funds now, I think. How are we doing with Minos? Okay, we've still got some more transports incoming, but they're doing pretty well. What I might do is I might actually put some spending into Minos to try and get those going a bit quicker. So let's go to transfer funds on treasury. Let's put in, how much can we put in? You can only put twice as much as the what you've already got there. So uh, it's industry view we want. Yeah, 35, so we, we don't want to put any more than 70 in. Although it, it, this is not like Master of Orion. Now you can you don't have to micromanage this. You can actually just queue it up, um, which is great. But actually, I, I don't want to spend all my all my funds all at once. I do like to micro. <laughs> the, and the, the Also, the, the modders that I was chatting to on Reddit, they're saying, oh, check out the mods that we've got. And uh, the reason why I haven't isn't because... I've got an aversion to them particularly. It's just that um, I'm not really that bothered about the automation stuff. I like to micromanage stuff myself just so that I, can't, I just kind of enjoy it. I quite like just, I quite like being in control of what I'm doing. And I, for example, when I play Distant Worlds, I pretty much turn all the automation off for the most part, apart from escorts and a, a few other, you know, and, and some automated re, um, automated exploration. Because I, I, I find that I find the game becomes a bit overwhelming if the if it's doing things for me and I can't keep up with it. And that's, that's just me. So uh, to anybody who's watching, go and go to the Reddit, go to the ROTP Reddit and check out. Uh, I forget the guys' names now, um, but there's two guys who are, who are, who are, who have made some really cool mods. So go and check out the mods, and they they can be very very helpful, particularly if you're playing very large galaxies and you and you want to automate. Um, automate things like your planet management, and I, th I think I think they send out, they automate things like sending um, scout ships out and that kind of things. Uh, I've, apologies if I've just butchered what these mods do, but yeah, go and check them out and and take a look because they're obviously really cool projects. Okay, guys, I'm going to end the episode there. So um, next in the next episode, I think that we're going to be looking at ah, oh, there's Mechlon. So that's the Mechlar's homeworld. Yeah, in the next episode, we're going to be just rapidly um, populating these new planets. And then we're into the mid-game. So I'll see you next time.